Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be working on part three of our list implementation. If you remember, we said that we're going to do a very simplified implementation. And in this part, the intention was to work on the permission bit. And we'll see that it's actually quite easy to get the permission string to represent a file or directory. For our long listing, we're going to show the permission, the size, and the file name. We already took care of the file name and the size. Now we just have to work on the permission. So before we can work on a permission, we need to understand Unix permission. So what is permission like in Unix when we talk about Unix? Well, well, let's revisit, bin do some binary review, binary numbers, and how you can convert between binary and decimal. So if I have four bits, um, this is from chapter two, when we're talking about binary with num different type of numbers and how everything in the computer is a number. If I have four bits, that's called a nibble. Now you generally don't get to define a nibble, but we're just gonna focus on four bits here. And then we're gonna say that the position, which is up at the top there, and we're gonna start from right to left. So position zero is on the right. And then we're gonna talk about the value of a bit which means is if you have a bit in a certain position, what is its value? And the way you compute that is by taking the bit's position, whether it's zero, one, two, or three, and then you raise it to the power of, um, you raise two to the power of that bit's position. So for example, if we're talking about the bit in position zero, for example, and we have a one there, that means that that bit is on, then to compute its value, well, we just raise two to the zero, which is one. And then similarly, the bit in position one, its value is two raised to the power of one, which is gonna give you two. Um, the next bit, of course, is going to be a bit in position two, and two raised to the two is four. And then finally, we have the bit in position three and two raised to the three is eight. Now, taken together, those are the values that each one of those bits contribute, right? Now, in to find the decimal value of any set of bits, we just have to ask which bit is on or off. As we know that this is a bit, binary means two. So the only two possible value a bit can have, which is on or off or zero on one or one, right? So if the bit is one, then we only count that combination of the bit's value. So in this example where we have all the bits are off, well then none of the bits are contributing their value. So the end result in decimal is equal to zero. In the next example, um, we have only the bit in position zero that's been that's on. So that bit's value we know is one. So None of the other bits are contributing a value, so the result is one. In the next example, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, and that's written from left to right, 0, 1, 0, 1, but the positions that we're concerned about is bit position two and bit position one, and the corresponding bit values for those is four and one, so the end result is five. Next example is here we have bit position, we have bit 0, 1, 1, 1, and so the bits that are contributing their values are the bits in position two, one, and zero. And so we have four from bit position two, two from bit position one, one from bit position zero. And when we add that up, four plus two plus one gives us the value of seven. Finally, we have one, zero, zero, one. And if we look again at the bits and who's contributing their value, it's going to be the bit in position three, which we know the value there is eight, and the bit in position one, whose value is one, so that gives us a value of nine. All right, so what does this have to do with permissions in Unix? Well, the way permissions are represented in Unix is that you have a set of bits and you use some of those to represent the type of thing that you're talking about, whether it's a file, a symbolic link, a corrected device, a socket, regular file, blah, blah, blah. And that's your first set of bits there. And we are not going to focus on what those bits can possibly represent because we're going to use file info to tell us whether it's a file or a directory and that's it. The next set of bits, um, we, they have three bits allocated for the owner's permission. And that tells whether the owner can read, write, or execute this file, directory, or whatever it is it applies to. Uh, the next three bits 
um, for the group. So when you have an account in a Unix system, not only do you have your account, but you also can belong to one or more groups. And so this says, for the group that owns this file, what is their permission? Next, we have another three sets of bits, and those refer to other, and that is for anyone who is not the owner or the, a member of the group, but it is their permission. And so if we look at some example here, we can see that X, regardless of which group it's in, whether the owner group or other, is about execution. And so if we're talking about a regular file, like a program, if it has an execute bit on it, it means that you can execute it. So that can be a program you create, like our LS program here, or a script. For a directory, execute simply means that oh, you can you are able to enter that directory. All right, so execute might not apply to everything, but on file and directories, um, they do have meaning. Okay, so, um, and finally, um, the other one is, for example, like being able to read or write to a file. And so um, let's take some example. Let's look at, for example, the first row where I have no permission. That means that nobody has permissions to this file. But if we look at a more common example where the owner has read and write permission for a file, but nobody else has any permission, then you can represent that as 600. And the reason why it's six is because look at those four three bits. When you take those four three bits by themselves, that is six. And that's why we were working on nibbles just now and looking at, you know, how you can take just a grouping of bits and figure out their value. So remember, you have to treat each set of bits, the three bits for the owner by itself and evaluate what does that mean? What value does that come out to? And the maximum value you can get for any three bits is gonna be seven. Okay, and if you look at the last row there, you can see that. So for the owner in this file, seven is given full read, write, and execute permission. All right, so let's jump in and create some files and we can play with what Unix permission sort of look like. So if we copy our project from last week and you know, of course we can um, create some files to test in. And this is really the Unix permission and what I'm doing now is sort of beyond the scope of this class, but just imagine that I create a file and I put some secret in it and then now I can access it. I have another user called Vero who can see it. And of course the root user, they always have access to everything uh, in Unix anyway. And if I change the permission, which is saying that only I, the owner or another, can read or write to it, notice how suddenly Vero cannot access, to, do not have access to this file. Now I can take away all my permission and notice though how root can still access this file. And I can give permission back to the group, but Veril still can access it because Veril is not in the same group as another. Okay, let's jump back now and look at our program. And we could see that um, the listing for the bytes is kind of off. It's weird. That is not exact that's not how we want our um, size to be listed. So we should definitely go fix that. In addition, we have to replace the placeholder for permission. So if we go run down to our code and we look at how we're printing out the size, um, we just need to format differently. So here we're using 2% V and um, <clears throat> basically percent V and we let letting go decide how to format this. So we're saying format this as a float. We're gonna build it and rerun it and now it looks a lot better. And that that two before the percent F tells us that we, we need to be used in two decimal places. So uh, we can give some more space here by saying you allocate six spaces up front. Now we need to start working on our permission. Right now we have this permission placeholder. And so if we go up and we look at a file info, we can see there's this mood function. And then um, on the mood, you can see it though, it's both the file type and the permission. So the file type refers to those upper bits that I told you about that we're gonna ignore. And if you look at the mask, that's 077, it really just makes sure that you're focusing on the permissions only. And so you can call this permission function that is going to just return the permission bit because it masks off the type. If you don't understand what masking means, it's a binary operation and don't worry about it. Just basically know that if I call m that perm, perm, I'll get the permission and that's all I care about, okay? And so once we have the permission, now this is the same as if we did the masking ourselves to ensure that our, you know, no type information is there. Now we know that our um, nine bits are gonna be used for the representing the permission. Three for the user and three for the group 
and three for others. So what we can do is again, keep masking out those bits. So one way you can think of it is I can shift the permission bits down by six. This is a binary operation that removes the lower six bits. And then to ensure that oh, nothing is introduced when I shift it down, like I don't pull down any other, like flip some bits from zero to one, I can mask by seven, which means remember seven represent one, one, one. So I'm ensuring that my user bits is just literally just three bits alone. And I do the same thing for group, but now I only have to shift down three to get rid of the lower three bits which represent the other. And then when I ready to get other bits, I only need to mask off, mask three bits, three bits. So if this doesn't make sense to you again, this is our binary stuff and all I'm doing is trying to pick out the individual bits, set of bits that I want to operate on. And then for that, I'm gonna pass it to this function called permission bits to string. And what I want is really for this permission bits function, just take those three bits that I'm gonna pass it. Well, it's actually gonna be a 32 bit value, but it doesn't really matter. There are only three bits that I can care about because remember, since I masked by seven, all the other bits are gonna be set to zero. The bits from in position um, three all the way to 31 are gonna be set to zero. So um, this is all I need to work on. And so what I'm gonna do is create a byte slice and I'm gonna put some dashes in place because if nothing, if there, there's not, if I'm um, user of permission to the read, write, or execute, these are gonna be dashes anyway. And I could turn a byte into a string very easily, which is what I'm gonna do, cast it to return it. And so all I need to test and see is if I mask, again, the bits that are given to me with like six, because we, um, well, it's not supposed to be six, it's really supposed to be four, because if in position two, we're talking about two to the two, which is four. And then for um, right access, it's going to be in position one, and two to the one is two. And so, um, and execute access is going to be two to the zero, which is position, um, which is just one. So if I mask with those and then I rerun, now I should be able to get the correct thing. But here's what I run into. When I did this, I was confused as to why it's not working. It's not looking exactly like it's supposed to look when I run it with the built in list program. Mine doesn't look that way. So something is going on. So I try to understand what is going on by going back and printing out um, the, the bits that I'm, I'm given after I mask it to make sure that I'm doing my masks correctly. And when I did that, then I found something really interesting. And that is, I realized that um, Golang already is when you have the permission bits mask off and you call the to string function on it like when you do a print or use it in string context, it is already um, converting it <laughs> correctly to the, you know, to represent the permission as a string. That number is already converting it as a string. So they have an implementation for this already. So that's why we really don't need to, to do it. And it's not that our, uh, what I'm doing at the bottom here is wrong. It's just that uh, when I try to print it out, it's calling the built-in string one, and by the time then I've already manipulated the the value. Okay, so just return it incorrectly because I've already masked off um, the important parts, and then now I'm trying to to get. So you see here, if I just run it as it is, you'll see it how it's already know how to print those out, and so that was the confusing part. And when I realized this, I'm like, oh, I really don't need to go manipulate the bits because Golang is already taking these bits, as notice how I mask them off and um, separate them, and it's already turning them into a string. So all I really need to do is take out all of this stuff that I'm doing and just have um, used the built-in permission function. I don't even need any of this whatsoever. I don't even need to implement a function to, to convert permission. I simply need to just call this here and say, well, this is a, in the string context, and I don't need to worry about if it's a dash or a file or any of that stuff. I just say fi that move permission and then call that as a string. And now I'm going to get um, the string value exactly like I need it. Now, because I don't need to be able to say that oh, I'm going to prefix the permission with a D or a dash, because remember, Golang is going to do all of that for me. It's going to take care of it's a socket or corrected device, which are things we weren't going to handle. Now I have another problem because there I was resetting my string. And now I just keep appending to it. So I've introduced a bug by removing that um, if statement. So now I just need to go back and just take that out and um, that fixes that bug. So we're back to a very simple or simple example working as we expect. 
um, once I remove um, that um, fix that error where I just reset S instead of I keep appending to it. All right, and so I'm gonna move um, this S that I set. I'm gonna overwrite it here instead of append, like I said, build and list it, and there you go. We did not have to do any conversion. Golang is doing it properly for us. And then if we look at the directory, we can see that oh, it's um, it's listing it properly also. So here is the function that I mentioned that I didn't notice that they had implemented for permission bits, and that's why it's printing it out um, correctly. Not only permission, but the whole file mode. So it takes care of everything. Because remember, the mode represents the, both the type of the file and the permission. So it's just printing out the entire thing. All right. So I hope you're not disappointed that we didn't have to implement it, but I hope you're relieved that, hey, you got to see a way you could sort of pull the bits apart. If that's sort of confusing to you, um, definitely do some reading up on um, binary manipulation. Um, that's part of outside the scope of this. But um, on time, I plan to have a C programming class, and there's where I'm going to cover a lot of stuff like binary manipulation. OK, take care. Um, see you in the next video. Um, have a great day and hit the thumbs up button, spread the word. And if you're listening to this and you haven't subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button. All right, bye.